Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dean Chitrin, and I want to come on here and share uh, how I'm trained for a competition and how you can train to drop 10 strokes in 90 days. The uh, U.S. Senior Open Qualifier in the Tampa, Florida area is May 23rd or 13th, I think. And so I'm going to share my journey of how I'm going to prepare um, the eight skills that we train in the Navy SEALs golf training program. Uh, the number one is putting. Number two is finesse wedge. Number three is bunker. Those are all around the green within about 30 yards. And we have distance wedges in the full swing, which we spent about eight weeks training those areas right there. Then we have fitness, which would be stability, mobility, flexibility, core strategy. And then number eight is mindset and confidence, as well as some emotional control. So today I'm gonna do um, what I believe is necessary is the body. You know, if your body has been trained of how it's supposed to move in a golf swing without a golf club, then you add a golf club and then you learn the proper skill and technique and fundamentals with that golf club, then it becomes easier to hit more consistent straight shots, either in the fairway or in green regulation. So when we look at, let's go back to the first skill set putting on the golf course, when you're on the green, you need to be able to read the green. You need to be able to, speed the green and you need to be able to hit your line. Those are skill sets. But prior to being on the golf course, it's imperative that you have a correct grip, stance, posture, ball position, eye alignment and stroke. And those are the things you can do in, inside of your studio like this that I have here or in your living room, just working on basic fundamentals to have a good grip, stance, posture, ball position, eye alignment, stroke for putting. Then you learn how to read green. And then you train accuracy of hitting your line, making sure you have a square face and a square path. And then you train speed control drills from 6, 12, 18, 24, all the way up to 60 feet. And then when you put those all together in about three weeks, you can be able a very, very good putter at your country club or golf course or wherever you play. Then we add on that stroke, the putting stroke, we add on the finesse wedge stroke. The finesse wedge is really just means that you're not using a lot of force with your arms. You're just learning how to use your wrists, educated hands of how to cock the club, uncock it, and roll it through to impact. And so finesse means just imagine that there's a ladybug on a golf ball and you want to move the ball without harming the ladybug. It's five yards, 15 yards, 25 yards, 35 yards around the green, pitching it high and chipping it low. Then there's the bunker around the green, learning how to have the correct posture stance and then learning how to accelerate the club head past your wrist through the sand onto the ball. Then the fourth skill set is distance wedges, 42 yards, 87 yards, 65 yards, having control of your distances from being in the fairway. And then if you're in the rough as well, and then the full swing, which if you can't be good at ball striking, you're going to have a hard time playing defense all day long in, in the high score. So a, a good full swing T box puts you in a really good offensive position to play smart and play aggressive. If you need to, if there's a good pin location. When we look at stability, mobility, and flexibility, no matter what age you are, it all boils down to flexibility first, because if, you, if you're not capable of getting your shoulders or arms back here, you might have to have some type of compensation in your swing. So we want to get the body in, in the good flexibility, stability, and mobility. And then core strategy, having the discipline to play the whole, if it's a short 340 yard par four, you don't necessarily have to use a driver every time. If you hit a, a, an iron or a wood up 200 yards, that leaves 140 in, you could hit your eight iron or your nine iron. 
and then two putt for par, one putt for birdie if you make the green. And then mindset and confidence. You know, we're, we're going to have to get our mindset and our body in alignment to what we're trying to accomplish. And that comes down to a belief system and having the right um, support group to encourage you that it is possible that you can do whatever you want to do with the right team and the right skill set and the right effort. So the first thing I wanted to train today is how I am going to train my body specifically without a club first. So in my opinion, if we look at the golf swing, we'll put this here to, in the golf swing, what we're doing on the back swing is we're doing this, we're having our shoulders turn, we're having our left arm elevate, so our shoulders are going to turn like that, and then our left arm would elevate, and our hips would turn and we get loaded up on this side of the body. And on the downswing, since we have to take our weight shift back here, we have to get it to the other side, so there's going to be on average in the PJ Tour, there's a four to six inch hip slide towards the target in the downswing. But the left side does exactly what the right side does. So we're going to have this motion here and this motion here. It's the exact same motion in golf. It's just when you get to the backswing, there's going to be a shift. And then you're over here in this position. So from this view, the right side for right-handed golfers, the arm comes up here. The left arm is straight right over my right ear and the right arm folds. And on the follow through, it's the exact opposite. The left arm bends up here and the right arm comes up this way. And so we're gonna be training right now how to develop this specific motion. And from my experience, just by learning how to move the body first without a golf club and train my brain and body to sync up perfectly, then it's easy to train the skill set. So I'm going to go through a routine here where I'm going to be extremely stable right here. I'm going to get my golf posture here, and then I'm just going to do some of these drills here. One, two, three, four, five. And you can do as many as you want. I'm going to do five just for the purpose of this training. I'm also going to do it on the left side, even though I'm not a left-handed golfer, I still want to train the brain, the neural pattern of how it's supposed to feel in the golf swing. One, two, three, four, five. And this is where my hips are going to be at impact, so I'm training how to stabilize this left leg for when I get to the follow through. So now from this view, I want to have and go like this and open that chest and that shoulder way up. And from this view here, I don't want to get way back here. I want to typically be right here. So I'm going to just go one, two, learn how to open up the shoulders because the shoulders are going to rotate in the golf swing. The left arm being on this end, so the left arm doesn't go up here, it's on an angle here, so the left arm is simply just going to raise up about this much, depending on your body, that's all the left arm does in the golf swing. So when I turn my shoulders, left arm is just going to elevate, the right arm is going to fold, and it can externally rotate. So the arms are going to be in front of the chest, more over on this right side, and the shoulders would turn. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do it left-handed just because I want to train my body to load up on this leg, make sure that the knee rotates, the weight gets on the outside of the left heel, 
and learn how to move this hip. And because I don't want to tumble forward, I want to, once I get to this position here, I just want to rotate up. So it's odd for me to do it left handed because I'm not left handed. One, two, three, four, five. And so all I'm doing is I'm training my body how it's going to move in a golf swing. Now from here, I'm going to take what my left arm would do, it would elevate. And so since my shoulders are turning, it's elevating this way. It's elevating, it's not going across. One, two, three, four, five. Now the next one would be here, and we're going to come down to impact. So we move this cone here, so I'm a good view here. So the hips are going to one, two, three, four. Five. And I can really feel this resistance as it gets back here. It's really rotating and posting up on my outside loop. Next one, we're going to come past impact if you're hitting a knockdown shot. One, two, three, four, five. And then once we're at the, towards the target here, we want to train thrusting up and rotating around. One, two, three. And from this view, that would be the target. Here I am at the target. I want to have my, I want to have my belt buckle a little bit past the target and my shoulders even further around. So squat down a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. And you can do as many reps as you want to get your body in peak performance to be able to play 18 holes and have proper rotation and sturdiness and stability and mobility. Now we're gonna come in here, if we're, if we're doing this on the backswing, we wanna do this on the follow through, it's the upper cup. We don't wanna do a hook, cause that's gonna take our shoulders around. We wanna do an uppercut, and from this view, I'm coming up right here in the golf posture. Uppercut. Okay. So you can see the gap between the cone. Here's the back swing, down swing, rotate impact. Upper cut. And for me, once I started doing this training in the upper cut move, I was able to keep my hands on this imaginary circle back here, down to impact, and back up the circle here versus having the arms go too far out this way and changing the radius of the arc by having an uppercut, which say powerful move because we're going to have a lateral shift backwards. We're going to have a lateral shift backwards. We're going to have a downward motion. And then as we rotate, we're going to have to thrust up and back. And that can be demonstrated 
really simply, just by using one club in your hand here, if there's no right hand on the club, that centripetal force is going to rotate me all the way around. If I have a, a another hand on the club, it can stop it as a governor. It governs this from freely rotating around. That's why you saw VJ Singh sometimes in competition swing his hand right off the club so he wouldn't slow down. And then here's the back swing and here's the down swing. Back, I'm stable, I'm loaded up properly, I'm not swaying, I've got the weight on the inside of my leg, up to the top, squat to square, rotate. Back and through, back and through. But my favorite training is coming through here and doing the uppercut. Because I want to have some power coming up, just punching right through. And we got a little visual that I'm going to throw the ball, the club head, that way. But I don't want to extend that that way. I want to come up and around. And then the club head is going to hit the ball, and it's going around this way, uppercut. So over the next three months, I'm specifically training my body in this basic exercise here, as well as stability, mobility, and, and golf-specific training. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Definitely learning how to thrust up and back. Because when we have a club head being thrown out that way, there has to be an opposing force pulling back. If not, then everything would tumble forward. So as the club head is thrown outward, once you pose up and the shoulder gets here, that shoulder is actually pulling back and up. So let's see if I can do this with a club in the hand. Up to the top, up to the top. That's the same thing as up to the top right here. Notice my spine is staying on this angle right there. So I can get up to the top, uppercut, uppercut. training for today. Eight things that we'll be working on over the next three months. Number one is putting. Number two is finesse wedges. Number three is bunker. Number four is distance wedge. Number five is full swing. Those are the skill sets that have to be trained separately and individually because they're different skills.
demonstrate by using for right-handed golfers the magic of the right forearm. So here's a putting stroke. All my right forearm did was this. So that's the putting stroke. Now we want to use the finesse wedge stroke. Still, this is what the forearm does. For right-handed golf, it's the magic of the right forearm. We get to the bunker stroke. It's really the similar. Here's the right forearm. We're going to get it up quickly and we're gonna throw the club head under the sand, under the wall. So we're taking this club head and we're making sure that the shaft, the club head passes the hands, so the shaft would not be here for, the shaft would be in this angle for chips and distance wedges and full swings, but for pitch shots and bunker shots, we wanna have the shaft back and the only way to do that is take the club head and throw it. So the bunker swing, it's still, Imagine the right forearm. And then for distance wedges, forearms doing the exact same thing. How many times in a thousand times can you do this? With body rotation, with the correct body rotation for the type of swing you're going to employ. So distance wedge, seven o'clock distance wedge swing, eight o'clock distance wedge swing, nine o'clock distance wedge swing. And then the full swing. The right arm is going to bend and then likely externally rotate, because as the swing gets longer, the elbow's gonna come away from the body, and then the downswing is gonna reposition back and, and then rotate. But it's still the magic of the right forearm for right-handed golfers. So those are the five skill sets. Then we have number six, which is fitness. Stability, mobility, but most importantly, flexibility, and then have a dynamic balance by doing the training we just did, learning how to move the body for the golf motion. And then course strategy is a, a critical component. Playing the course properly, having a discipline to play it properly based on your current level of skill set. And then number eight is mindset and confidence. How do you identify now? How do you identify as your future self, as the future golfer. If you're currently a 15 handicap, could you imagine yourself being a four handicap? Could you imagine that? So whatever county you're in, why not just claim that you're the best putter in your county, the best putter in your county, and then in order to do that on the green, you have to read it, speed it, and line it. But prior to that, you need to have a good grip A good grip for me I like to put the grip in the lifeline of my wrist bone and have it in line the shaft in line of my forearm not like this where it's in the pad this is not in line with my forearm but if it's in line with my forearm it's easier for me just to rotate and have the face square the pass square so having a good grip so that I can go back and through and then the stance and posture, having the correct stance and posture for golf, ball position, alignment. And those are the things you can do indoor with some training aids, eyeline mirror, putting arc, yardstick. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me at dean at deanchitron.com. If you want to learn more about our, our Navy SEALs golf training program, go to low70golf.com. And let's see what we can accomplish over the next three months. Can you drop 10 strokes? Absolutely. Can I train my body first and get it prepared to, you know, throw a club 100 miles an hour at a ball? That's what I'm working on. So you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.